I broke through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample-tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by the director of the documentary Psalm. Jason Wise. Which is a story both about the, was it the Master Sommelier exam and a group of people attempting to pass it. It's sort of discussing both aspects of it, which for those of you who don't know, which is me, apparently this is one of the toughest exams <laughs> in the world. Like something like what, 180 people have passed in like 40 something years? Yeah, 197 at the moment is is kind of what it is. Yeah. And how exactly does how, do you even become aware of this? Because A, I didn't even realize there was like test that you had to pass like I, yeah. I knew I knew sommelier was a job at restaurants but I didn't realize they're like degrees like you know karate yeah I didn't realize there are tests that you had to pass yeah or, you know I mean the, the whole process of figuring this out kind of went about very organically I've always been into I mean I like to say wine but really just drinking I think as a whole um, you know this I knew somebody uh, while I was bartending who was a server and they were starting at the very bottom level of going through this. And when they reached sort of the middle, I sort of went and watched them practice, I guess. And I and I looked at it and I just I could not believe a movie had never been made about this. And I was sort of starting to talk to the guys he was studying with and realize there's real drama here. I mean, this is actually a, a real story. And uh, it's not really about wine, which was the cool thing. You know, it's a hard thing to make a film about wine. I, you know, it's funny you say that because there's actually a reason I totally believe that this could be an interesting film. Uh, did you ever see Bottle Shock? Of course, yeah. Which was which was an excellent film. I didn't know anything about that going yeah. to that one either, and that was very interesting. And that was especially funny because initially I was under the impression that was a documentary. Oh, really? And so I was like, "What is Chris Pine doing here?" I was yeah. like, "What's Chris Pine?" Have you know, to it's do? funny. Uh, Bo Barrett's in the film who Chris Pine played in wow, that that's film. Funny. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. That, I mean, that, again, you know, talking about the competition between America and France, all these countries right. for the best wine. I mean, you think about how co competitive that is. It makes total sense that that would extrapolate into like the drinking oh the for mouth. sure oh yeah and like at, w at what point did you sort of realize that this was like beyond just like complex and when you see these individuals with like ian cobo ian cobble cobble yeah. like these people have like thousands of note cards oh, they it's... drink for like hours and hours every day like this is this is this is a lifestyle and not just an exam i think it's a lifestyle for them and everyone around them to you know to sort of do oh, that absolutely. i mean you know, I, that's what sort of made this such an interesting film is that these are some of the most passionate people I've ever met dealing with anything, let alone wine. I mean, it's just, it happened to be wine. It could have been skydiving or, or mathematics or anything. These people just are so passionate about what they're doing that you can't help but just sit there with your jaw on the floor. Like, how can you believe in something so much? And they do. The funniest thing is you mentioned sort of their their loved ones because that is sort of one of the most interesting aspects of the movie for me is listening to like these wives and girlfriends being like, yeah, you know, can't wait for them to pass it. And yeah. it's sort of like, I don't know if they realize that this is never going to end. Like this, this is, this is what it is Ugh. for like the rest of it. Cause this, yeah. like to stay on top of the theory, like when you're talking about like the theory section or like the, the blind identification. So let's clarify. Let me clarify for a second. There are three parts of the test. Three parts. Correct. There's theory, there's service, and then there's a blind tasting. Right. Exactly. And, and they're on three separate days. Yes. Yeah. And it's sort of like, okay, you know, service. Maybe if you're a nice person, you can handle that one relatively. I can sort Yeah, of but there's a lot of trivia. I mean, it's a lot of uh, questions that are thrown at you during sure. the service thing, too, you know, and, and things in practice yeah. that you have to which, do. Which you show a little bit of with yeah. the showing of the yeah. ball. So that, that one seems like the most tangible one to me. The other yeah. two seem... Oh, well, that's, like, and that's why I focus so much more on that. You're going to see a sommelier. If you're ever going to encounter a sommelier, it's probably in a restaurant. And so yeah. I was I was less interested in where everybody's going to see Assam. I was more interested in the nobody would be in their room at four in the morning while they're agonizing over over regions of you know northern Spain, and nobody would be ever in a blind tasting sequence. I mean, uh, seeing that for the first time for me was a revelation. I mean, I'd never I didn't know that this energy existed out there. People were putting this kind of totally. energy. And so, what was your background as a filmmaker going into this? Because this, I mean. Mm -hmm. Documentaries are definitely sort of an interesting one. I mean, in some yeah. ways, they seem easier than narrative films because you don't have to have like to a 30-person crew, etc. But yeah. they are, 
much more of a marathon because mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff, I mean, you have stuff that dates years. Oh, it yeah. seems like it's, I mean, this is an yeah. ongoing thing for us. We filmed three years and you know, a lot of documentaries, I think that word has a, has a, has a stigma, especially in the United States. Documentary means boring or it means, oh, I, 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 you know, you're, you're probably right. But yeah. I fucking love documentaries. Oh, so do I. No, I, I mean, oh, I absolutely do. I mean, look, uh, I look at it this way. Whether you're doing a documentary or a narrative, you're manipulating reality anyway, sure. no matter what. Yeah. You're either writing the script before or you're doing it in the editing. And I don't really see a big difference. And I hope that comes across in the film where, you know, there's actually like luckily kind of an act structure and it builds to a conclusion. And I mean, I, 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 I talk about this more as a movie than a documentary only because the story, it's leading up to this major event oh, totally. that, that kind of happens. And so, I don't know. I, I, I like to think of... The, the one thing, though, to get back to what you asked is, is we shot everything except for there's one clip from one of the guys when they're really little right, with yes, wine. And outside yeah. of that, we shot every single shot on the film. And a lot of documentaries rely on stock footage or previous stuff. And th this wasn't that film. It's like in the moment, we shot it then, and uh, it took three years. You, you make me think of an interesting question, though. I mean, in the press materials, at least, and I would have to assume it would be true. I don't know why you would lie in that. But, like, <laughs> it's you speak about, it speaks about that this stuff has never really been shot before, and they're very mm, restrictive no. in terms of shooting it. Yeah. What was the process like in terms of oh, getting them to allow you to do it? Because it I seems like... I need a like, few more of these yeah, before I can... I mean, they're, like, the only thing, I guess, that you don't show in the movie but allude to is when they do the blind tasting at the, the actual exam. exam yeah yeah well there's reasons there's reasons for that that are more sure. dramatic than sure. actually permission but but the um you know for me that the drama is around the actual event and i don't think that would have been it would have really slowed the film down yeah i agree I, I feel that but the um you know it's 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 funny the 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 Getting permission from the organization was, I would say, the hardest thing that I did during the wow. process, hands down. Well, mainly because, I mean, you got to think of this. So this is my first feature film. You wow. know, I'm born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I, you know, somebody like that comes to you and they say, I have no money. I'm from the Midwest. I'm not in the wine industry. I have never made a film. I would like to be the first person to do something about this organization that's existed for, since the 60s with a lot of respect. And, you know, I can understand their apprehension is kind of like, mm, really? Yeah. You no, know, so, yeah. so I had to, you know, and of course the court itself is made up of a lot of different personalities and they all are incredibly accomplished people, very totally. alpha personalities. Yeah. And so obviously they wanted to make sure I, I took this seriously and I wasn't messing around. And so they, uh, they put me through the ringer and making sure I knew what I was talking about. But they let me make it as an outsider. I mean, they had no say in how I shot it, wh who I cast it in it, what I did, you know. Was, which was nice. I mean, that's a lot of respect. I, and I think... That's, I mean, well, that's also something you want to sort of maintain the integrity of the project. I mean, yeah, if they were really... In retrospect, if it works, they have... They look at it and go, okay, it worked. And I, I hope they all feel that it mostly did. I um, think it's... I mean, I, w yeah. I can't see it being a negative portrayal. Of yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, I feel that same way. And I, and I would hope they, they agree. But the, the crazy thing with the film is that... Think of the risk, though. I mean, I could have really, I could have really effed this up, and it could have been something. And I hope I didn't, but I mean, no. it could have been something where they go, "Oh my god," you know, and then they would have had to find a way to make another film <laughs> because sure, I sure. botched I, it. I, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's incredible considering it's your first film. Like, oh, thank I, you. it never even occurred to me that this oh, was thank the you. first time out. Yeah, um, that sort of brings up an interesting point as well, though. How did you go about finding these individuals to sort of yeah. feature it? Was it through the organization that they no. said? Like, it feels like, I mean, if you didn't know anything about the industry and you're doing a, your first film, like, it almost feels like a needle in the haystack kind it of is. thing to predict it is. these people. Yeah, well, the thing is, I mean, I was bartending, um, just after film school, I was bartending, and a friend of mine who also worked in the restaurant industry, you know, knew a guy who worked at Morton's Steakhouse, and so... That guy is Brian McClintock, who's one of the main characters really? in the film. Wow. And so him and I were friends. We'd drink until 4 in the morning in someone's garage talking That's about That's a very our... serendipitous thing. Yeah, but I mean, remember, at that point, he was just my buddy, and he wasn't yeah. going through the court. And so he started doing the process, and I started thinking, okay, maybe this is something that has a good story. And it happened very organically. And, you know, the, the process of it sort of kind of came into he was studying with another guy named Ian Cobble, and they were studying with Dylan Proctor, and they were studying with... Dustin Wilson and Brian moved in together to study, and those were the four guys that were studying together. Wow. So, I mean, I think 
if once in your life as a filmmaker you get to make a film that organically comes together the way this did, I think you're incredibly lucky if once you get to do it. And I just, the one, the one thing I'm very proud we were able to do was be able to just listen to the way the story wanted to be told instead of trying to go, hey, we'll take a guy in Philly, a guy in London, a guy in New York, and a guy in L.A., and then make a film that way where they're not connected. And this, we let them come together, and we really only interviewed people that directly interacted with them. So there's a lot of master sommeliers in the film, guys and gals, but we really only chose the ones that were physically working with our candidates mm. instead of going, well, this guy's the most famous, or this guy's this, or this guy's this, let's find them. We just said, who are you training with? And we filled them. And that's we tried to keep it very how it actually went. And that, I don't know I mean, if that, if that answers your question. No, it totally does. It's but, very, I mean, it's very serendipitous because a yeah. lot of times for similar projects, you know, they have any number of camera crews following a whole bunch of different people right. simultaneously, and then right. they have to sort of put it together. I mean, yeah, they must have budgets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, they they have much bigger budgets, which is I mean, impressive yeah. considering how good this looks and how much stuff you cover. It, seems uh, it means impressive. it means a lot to you say that. I mean, it's that's great. One of the things I was wondering about, without getting too much into what happens, were you concerned about how everything plays out and how that might reflect on? the the exam itself because the the whole crux of the mm. film is like this is an incredibly challenging mm. okay thing. so yeah yeah i can answer this i know exactly where you're going i we basically we planned and we're ready and at peace for quite a long time that no one was going to pass so i mean i'll tell you that we were making a film that had no one passed to sort of show how hard sure, this was yeah, yeah. and i mean obviously the ending is a very dramatic thing. Dolly with a, very interesting. I don't, you know, we didn't know who was going to pass. We were told five minutes before, not who was going to pass, but that we were going to go in this room, get your cameras ready. Film. We had five minutes to figure out. We had no, no sound operator, by the way, no boom, no nothing. So we're like, how in God's name are we going to get sound, get camera angles? And it, that's why it's so raw and so... And it really, I'm very proud of how it turned out because it really was our only option. <laughs> was uh, I mean, from an outside source, like, I'm sure this is one of those things that, you know, someone on the inside would nitpick to death. Yeah, but, like, maybe. watching it from the outside, like, I was never like, wait a minute, no. this feels so, like... Yeah, no, it was very, like, we just got put in a, in a little conference room at a hotel and they said, okay, you know, they're coming in in five minutes. I'm like, did anyone pass, please? Because we would film in a certain way. And they're like, we can't tell you. And their integrity is, like, up till the second... They, we found out with them. And oh, yeah, it's I, funny I, when they're like fucking with even the candidates. Oh, yeah. like, oh, you know, God. Like, oh, it's, my God. You wouldn't <laughs> believe so. Myself and my director of photography, Jackson Myers, we were in that room um, hearing the results, and I couldn't – I made Jackson be on our subjects because I physically – I mean, I was, I was very emotional in the room. And so I filmed the people giving the results. Uh -huh. But, I mean, we were all – it was everyone's crying in the room. It was amazing. Wow. It was a very, very cool – very cool experience, and uh, you know, I not to give away the ending, but you know, it's very emotional. You know, oh, it's no, not, totally. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's not expected, and it wasn't expected by us when we filmed it. <laughs> In some ways, it's kind of. I enjoyed it more than probably what I predicted the ending would be. Like looking at the like individuals going into it, it was definitely a very big surprise. I would say I was yeah. not expecting that. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we weren't certainly expecting it either. So. <laughs> Another thing I always wonder about documentaries is how you know like when you've got what you want. Because I mean, obviously, mm. you know, the test for this one is one of those easier places where you could say, you know, we're going to stop it here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it feels like, you know, Picking where you want to begin everything yeah. versus, you know, if you want to end exactly at the end of the test or if you want to go a little bit beyond that. Yeah. I mean, there, it seems like it's a very nebulous sort of endeavor where there's no clear right or wrong answer. In terms yeah, of well, I think it certainly is. But, you know, the good thing about making a, a documentary like this, we had no backup plan. So we started it with, like, we have only this camera to shoot with. We have only this amount of time I can be here. We have only this. I mean, we literally, there were never, well, generally when you make a film, you try to control every aspect you can. And instead, the only thing we controlled is that we had no control. We basically were like, this is, we got, it's going to start here because this person's willing to be filmed and we have a camera. And so we would start. And a lot of those shots that, you know, happened, especially earlier in the film, was just me with a camera and that it was Jackson and I, and pretty much that was the size of the crew on site. Wow. But the, when you end, I'll tell you how it ended. My wife is a co-producer on the film, and she yanked the damn thing out of my hand and said, <laughs> it's time to stop editing. It's just time, because if you don't stop editing, we're never going to get this movie out. And it was just one of those things that, like, it's kind of like all of a sudden, stop. So that's kind of all my time. I, I mean, I she's a great producer, thank God. I mean, she... 
Well, I mean, it's sort of probably in an interesting sort of parallel to what's going on on the screen where these mm -hmm. people are obsessing over oh. wine in endlessly and they're like significant in others. Yeah. They're just like, you know, I, I, I like to see them once in a while, you know, it's nice. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely sort of an interesting story. What was it like interviewing the masters that, I mean, besides the people in the attempting to get into the master society or um, whatever you want to call it? Because there's some really interesting people who are already right. masters who are sort of, some are helping them, some are just giving information about the experience of going through the process. Like, yeah. I found those interviews to be fascinating. That's great. I mean, it, to me, you know, it was very, I don't know, I have nothing but crazy respect for these people. I mean, I, I think outside of the people directly directly dealing with them and outside of themselves, I don't know who's had a better look at what actually happens than myself and the crew. So, I mean, I am positioned uniquely to really respect these people. So when I would sit down and talk to them, it kind of took on like I was interviewing like a famous athlete or something. Within their circle, these people have earned their <laughs> reputation. Which well, actually is one of my favorite things is that one of them was named Michael Jordan. I know. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Everyone's like, who's the Michael Jordan of this business? I'm like, well, Michael Jordan's Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan's, <laughs> Jordan's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he's in there too. You know, I, I, it's very interesting because, yeah. yeah, these people have been through this sort of ringer and they mm -hmm. sort of survived. So um, let's talk about like how this film was getting out there. Is there yeah. a distribution plan there in is. place? What, what is the sort of so, progress for people who want to see yeah, this film? Well, what happened, and I'll make this quick, is what happened is Sam got picked up for North American distribution by Samuel Goldwyn Films. Which is awesome. <sighs> My God. It's yeah. a, you talk about a needle in the haystack. I mean, documentaries never see the theater. and It's true. Yeah. We are released um, June 21st is our big release date, and that's New York, L.A., Seattle, San Francisco, Napa. And, Hitting those uh, wine places for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. And then you know the following weekend it goes to uh, Austin and Denver and several other places. I mean, cool. there's a there's actually a pretty big release happening for this film, Orlando, and you know. As, you're right. I mean, documentary films generally do not get particularly yeah, they wide do not. releases. They uh, do website not. for the film. You know, we're steering everybody to the Facebook page, which is Facebook. Uh, dot com ba uh, backslash somdoc film okay. so that's I'll where sure we're gonna put it down here yeah 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 that's that's where we're that's where we're steering everybody to it has all the, the screenings but it's going to be on itunes june 21st and wow, in, that's cool yeah in chicago it actually gets it a week early june 14th for a week at the music box theater <laughs> i know um okay I also so want, you're you're based up here in seattle i am based up here in seattle yeah seattle gets it june 21st in the theater which I mean yeah. is very appropriate because I mean Seattle is definitely a very wine friendly, one area. of the I best mean, food and wine Columbia, cities. Uh, yeah, food. The food yeah. is great here. That's that's a whole other thing. I was that we didn't even talk about. It's yeah. sort of like the knowledge of food and wine pairing and yeah, stuff like oh that. That's I mean, it's so complex. Okay, you do you have a uh, website, or Facebook, or Twitter, or anything I that do. people can keep up with what you're yeah, working on? Because uh, I definitely am curious what you're going to be doing <laughs> after this. Yeah, my Twitter is at JBW Pro. JBW okay. Very easy yeah. to remember. And yeah. do you have anything in the pipeline? I do. I actually. But, you know, I, originally I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm not going to make any more food and wine films, but I'm going to probably be making something set within the world of the oyster industry coming up pretty oh, soon. Oh, man, that'd be interesting. And, an, and a narrative I've written. So Again, something that I don't know a lot about, so I would appreciate people, that as well. People have no idea how fast. I mean, it'll be. I, I know some people are really even, hardcore. You know, very dramatic film. People would not expect what the stories that are going to be in this film. It's not. I look for. I, my favorite thing is when people go. Wow, a film about wine sounds boring, or a film about oysters. Well, who cares? You know, I love that. I just look at them and I go, okay, well, I look forward to the challenge of making it something you go, holy shit, I had no idea this was no, actually I, good. I, I, I definitely appreciate that. So, I mean, that's one of the things that was most interesting to me about this is like, yeah. I've never heard of this. I don't yeah. know this such a thing. I mean, I, you know, the, the whole point is if someone's going to pay money to see something, it better be entertaining. Yeah. You know, it better be, I mean, at least that's that's the goal. I mean, my goal would be that if and you're going to pay for it, I better not screw you out of your money. And I like the, the times when truth is stranger than fiction, which yeah. this is definitely in that sort of like, I yeah. can't believe that this is a true story. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Jason, and uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in. And we'll see you later. Thanks, guys.